Hi, my, uh, my, my name's Steve Thomas. I've uh, come to sell you some wheels today. <laughs> About um, 20 years ago, I worked for um, a company called Dymag, developing a, a race car. After they went bankrupt, I started developing a wheel to fit into their range of magnesium wheels. There had been some other carbon wheels made, but they were done with pre-preg and they had a ground outer edge. What we wanted to do was actually do a moulded outer edge and inner edge and a central hub unit that married into their magnesium wheel business. So you just change the hubs for different motorbikes. It was done on a five piece mould where the bottom layer, the first layer that you put down, actually came up and protruded past the top of the mould. The top mould just came to the edge. And we used a combination of a pressure bag within the wheel to actually consolidate the spokes and provide the bonding force to hold everything together. When they changed their magnesium design, they wanted a five-spoke carbon instead of a three-spoke carbon. That bag coming out of there through that hole was fairly easy. But to try and get a rubber bag out of that... OK, I made a rubber bag, but I thought there's no way that's going to come out of there. So, went to developing a, a thin film, it's a laminated polyester film that's been welded into that shape. So again with this one, because people want to actually see the carbon layer and see it nice and even and all these areas, they don't actually like to see any fibre um, tassels out the way. We were doing a wet lay process. The first layers went in very delicately so that we could actually get a good finish on there. And around the outer edge, again, both sides just up to the join line and then the spokes. So with the spokes in there, which way up is it? <coughs> when it's wet it all sticks in a lot easier. And the pre-wetted triaxial. So we had all the spoke layers of both sides already laid up in two panels. Bonding strips that held the two halves of the wheel together went in there around there and then the bag scratched up into the centre. <coughs> now with that all in These moulds are just a wet lay, back bagged, carbon mould. Sun on the glass, this one's carbon. We bolt them all together. This is more out of garden shed than out of autoclave, I suppose. Mm -hmm. and with that down there, you can now see how we can splay the spoke ends out into the rim detail. So you put those plies in with, with <coughs> resin as well? Yep, all, 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 yeah, all, all, all the plies are in resin um, and the bag will ju just have to tuck the bag in there so it's flush right. and so the bag isn't bridging at the spoke end. You've already got your first layer down 
with the nice join down the center. Again, you can move that. Another four layers <coughs> go around the outside. We're using quite a lightweight plain weave fabric. One, to get it to bed in nicely into the corners. We tried using heavier ones, but we got delamination on the, on the rim detail and also using the biaxial fibers. That gave us problem with the delamination on the side. So we've got four layers down, a foam core, because with the tire pressure at about 30 psi, you've got quite a lot of twisting force pulling these side rails apart. Another four layers down and some extra reinforcement just in the rim detail to give that edge a bit more protection. Once all the carbon has been put down, we need to mould the outer, outer edge. And we've got three machined aluminium outer formers that go on the outside of the wheel and compress what's there. Now the problem is, is if you've got a wet lay stack and you've got two bits of mould that you're going to pull together with a bolt, you're going to get the carbon rucking up in between the two. They're not going to close properly and you're going to have a weak cut line. So to overcome that problem, we do a pre-moulded, just two skins of carbon. That's vacuum bagged, but it's done with a release film that's got oversized holes. So these are actually laid up resin dry. So you get pinholes through, peel ply on the back for bonding. So these are actually porous. So as they're put onto the stack of fiber, you can see the resin slightly bleeding through the outer former. And as these go on with a overlap, as these compress, the fiber moves and this is, this is on a hard point. So you can compress the whole thing down. The excess, be before these are fully, so you've got about a five mil gap between these two. The bag can be pressurized fully because now the spoke end is supported. We put about 60 PSI into those bags, four bar, and that squeezes any excess resin out of the spoke area, out of the end of the spokes, and between these plies here. The formers go on slightly warm, warmed up about 50 degrees centigrade, so that softens the resin that's been used on the outer former. So that flows and then all of them are bolted together to the mating point that gives the tolerance for the, for the tire bead. And then during the setting process, the wheel has to be kept moving because you've now got a very heavy outer former hanging around the wheel. So to stop it sagging in one place, we keep it moving until it's set. How long does that process take? That's about two and a half hours laying up, one guy. So he's, he's working fairly quickly and probably mixing up two or three batches of resin. The resin we use is the, um, the Seba 5052, which is a 120 degree. And that's got about a 45 minute uh, pot life or working before it gets a bit thick. So by the time we're working on the outside, the centre's getting a little bit on the tacky side. So he's got to keep his wits about him and keep going. We did, on the very first wheels, use an 80 degree resin, which if some of you can see, maybe later afterwards, you can see some creasing marks around this wheel. And that was one of the first wheels that were tested. He put the wheel on his bike, went out on a racetrack, tested it, liked it, came back, left it in the pits, 
went ahead a break, came back about half an hour later, went out on it, looked down at the wheel, he was going down the pit lane at whatever speed he does, and saw his front wheel doing that. And where it had been in the sun, that part of the wheel was in the sun, that part of the wheel was in the shade, and the tyre was forcing the rims apart. <laughs> even, even with an 80, de 80 degree TG resin, the, the rim moved, and it moved 11 millimetres. So um, we had to change to a far higher temperature resin. It was surprising how, how much higher we had to go to be able to get that so that we could be sure if the wheel got up to 75, 80 degrees in normal use that it wouldn't, that it wouldn't move. It's not, not in it. It, it, the brake disc is out here, so... The tyre would have been hot as well, though, I guess, if it had just been out. Exactly, well, the, the tyre's hot, and the tyre warmers um, are actually set up at 90 degrees centigrade. So we did have a guy that used tyre warmers out in Malaysia with an air temperature of 45, um, and his wheel did deform slightly, so I don't know what temperature his wheel got up to, but it was, it was very hot. And then in the centres of these um, is a bonded magnesium centre. Uh, that one's for the Ducati um, with, a, with a single centre lock. Today has been a lot of talk about de-skilling stuff. With yeah. Um, I'm kind of rather refreshed that that was quite a job. It's... It's not particularly skilled, but the guy's got to the guy's got to be methodical, and he's going to he's got to want to do it neatly. Um, these these wheels are quite over-engineered because the main the main <coughs> damage that a wheel faces is not the loads that it gets through riding it along the road. It's when he hits a pothole, and the pothole hits there. So it's that part of the rim. So they're quite well over, over engineered and they're heavier than they need to be. But to pass the TUV tests, which say that the tyre's got to remain inflated after hitting a pothole for 30 seconds, means that that rim has got to be a lot stronger than it would normally need to be. Are they much lighter than the steel or aluminium? They're about one and a half, two kilos lighter than the magnesium wheel, which on gyroscopic effect, and rotational mass is quite, is quite a lot. We had one of the test riders put one on, go out, come back a couple of lace, set laps later saying, I can't ride with this, it's too twitchy. Put the magnesiums back on, went out again, thought this feels sluggish. Came back in, put the, mag put the carbon ones back on and said, right, I'm gonna take 10 laps and get used to it. And this was a mid-runner bike. Um, he got pole position and set fastest lap of the race. After just getting used to a wheel that turned in and was far easier to ride on. But most people now wanted them as um, pretty road wheels than specifically race wheels. Cost difference? A lot? Um, <coughs> The mag one's about 550, these were going about 750. So, if, exactly, if you can win that. And then, of course, because people wanted them <coughs> looking pretty on their roads, they wanted a spoked wheel with a carbon rim. Now we had problems with that because on the spokes, you've got a very, very high point loading right on, right on that edge, trying to pull, pull the bead out. So what we had to do with this one is pre-wet all the fibres on a bench, lay it around the mould, and the mould had that groove that's there. Using a carbon tow, we pulled the cloth in right down into the bottom there, and then put seven turns of stainless steel wire into the base of that rim there and then filled the rest of the void up with carbon tow. So the spokes are actually going through 
and pulling onto a stainless steel load spreader in the bottom of the in the bottom of the rim. And then they wanted to go for car wheels. Now after taking two and a half hours to uh, lay one of those up, the thought of laying one like that up <laughs> was um, a bit too much. And also the time involved in making the outer preforms as well. So we went for a totally different approach with this one and went for a vacuum infusion process on this wheel. It's got, it's got a standard 600 gram plain weave on the first one down because that's what people wanted to see and then seven layers of a triaxial fibre around the top. There's a matched aluminium tool, so five, five part, twin vacuum seals, top and bottom. The resin we had to use was, as the guy at the back said, we've, got a, we've now got a brake disc right in the middle of the wheel. And if you're looking at something like an Aston Martin that's got a seven kilo cast iron brake disc and he's stopped a few times, that can be up at 700 degrees centigrade. So you've got quite a heat transfer into the rim. So we looked at what resins were available and we got one at 210 TG, which uh, was quite viscous. So that had to be heated up. So a heated mould evacuated, resin infused. Um, and then the rim detail cut and trimmed and a 180 degree post cure on that afterwards. And the rim was a, started out as a cast alley, it was hoped to be a forged magnesium, but again, just bolted through the rim with doughty seals. Now that was a slight weakness um, and it was identified um, and we ended up putting metal inserts. A structural engineer said put them on both sides. A management team said only put them on one side because that's all he could afford. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are now in the hands of another company in Austria. As far as I know, in the corner of a workshop gathering dust. So all the mould tools for these that we developed are now just sat in a corner in a sorry state. These wheels, um, there's a company in Chippenham that have taken them over and are making a couple of week to uh, hopefully build up the production again. Um, so we'll see how they go.